Hey folks, the Field and Garden Podcast is honored to be partnering with the Growing for Market magazine. They have been publishing practical ideas and information for direct market flower and vegetable growers for over 31 years. All the articles are written by farmers who get their hands dirty and know what they're doing. The magazine is still on the same mission as when the Flower Farmer book author Lynn Bozinski founded this magazine back in 1992 to connect growers with the best ideas from other growers. There is dedicated flower content in every magazine. A decade's worth of back issues and over 1,600 archived articles from writers like Aaron Benzenkang, Gretel Adams, Pamela and Frank Arnowski, and Jonathan and Megan Leese, all available on the website. With 10 new issues every year available on paper, digital, or both, you're guaranteed to find something to fine tune your farm and growing for market. So if you do farmer's markets, CSA, farm stands, pick your own florist sales, or wholesaling, whether you're a commercial grower or you just want to grow like one, subscribe to Growing for Market for the nitty gritty details of growing, marketing, and the business of local farming. And I have a special offer for you. Use the coupon code WORKSHOP to get 25% off any subscription to the original Farmer to Farmer magazine at growingformarket.com. Hey friends, welcome back to another Field and Garden podcast. I think we're still in January, so Happy New Year, friends, and let's make it a new year. So I um, feel like I want to encourage people as I was just, I saw something the other day that just reminded me sometimes the obvious is not the obvious. So we're talking about staying between the lines and what in the heck does that mean? Before I dive into that, friends, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping in um, to the Field and Garden podcast, which is brought to you by thegardenersworkshop.com. That is my company's platform, which is a big old educational pool of stuff um, from tons of free resources in our blog, our podcast, tons of videos, as well as our online library of courses um, taught by flower farmers like myself and my peers, um, taking you from growing flowers in your backyard to starting a flower farm to expanding your flower farm and expanding it to include other things um, like farmer florist um, and beyond. I encourage you to kind of fall in over there and do a little exploring when that time comes for you. If you find that you um, also need any seeds, tools, or supplies, we have an online garden shop that includes the same stuff that you hear me mention here from time to time, as well as my books. Um, and so check it out. We appreciate that because frankly, that platform is what makes it possible for us to provide all of this free content that we give to you guys. And we love doing it. So when you need us, we're happy to help you in that department. So what in the world does staying between the lines mean? That means keeping your car on the road between the lines. As we are still in January or February, I'm not sure when this podcast will actually be broadcast, but we are, most of us are in the planning stages of our flower farm gardens, right? Or our crops. And I just want to affirm to you that sticking with your basic plan is really can be the roadway to success. And we just need that affirmation because, I mean, everywhere we turn, there's shiny objects, right? Other types of 
things that you hadn't planned on. Sticking with the plan. Sticking with the plan means you don't overspend. Sticking with the plan means you don't throw a wrench into your plan about where are you going to plant everything. I know that many of you are just like me. We don't have endless space. We don't have 10 acre farms. We have, you know, my whole property is two and three quarters acres and I have a home two major buildings um, on that property. So my working cutting garden um, now is only half an acre, but at the most during our high production years was only an acre and a half, which sounds like a lot. And that is a lot, but not when you start throwing in lots of extra stuff that you had not planned to grow. So I am here to say to keep your car between the lines on the road you have to focus on where you're going. And if you are like me, where I figured out that to get the biggest bang for my buck for the square footage that I have, the best choice for me was to grow annuals. They produce the longest um, in the shortest amount of time, the most blooms from the least amount of space. That's what led me here. And, you know, I always recommend that even flower farmers that do have more space, that do want to have structures, which, you know, I'm a 100% field grower, even if that's in your future, that we all start in the same place, y'all. While you're learning how to build and run a business, much less a flower farming business, to start with the, build, the, the strong blocks that you can build your business on. Simple, simple, simple. And what I ended up doing is I had such great success with that simple plan is I never really needed to go beyond that. And that's what today is about is for me to just affirm if you're in your planning and all of a sudden you're seeing everybody else buy this or buy that and you hadn't, you, you knew you really weren't there yet, but gosh, if they're doing it, I can. I'm here to say resist. This is part of becoming a business owner. You cannot jump on every passing car that's going past you. Let them get into the fast lane and go on. And you're just going to stick back here <clears throat> in your marathon. You're not running a sprint. You're doing the 27-mile marathon, right? So, simple sometimes is at the basics of what of some of the most successful businesses that you may see. So here's what I saw the other day that I thought, holy cow, I did not even know this, but what a great example for flower farmers. Did you know, I saw this comparison, that Chick-fil-A, and I'm sorry if you're in a place where you don't, you're not familiar with Chick-fil-A's, Chick-fil-A is an incredibly successful franchise type um, fast food chicken store. It's been around forever. We actually have Chick-fil-A owners in our family. It's been around forever. Did you know that one Chick-fil-A store grosses twice as much in a month, are you ready, as a Starbucks and a McDonald's restaurant combined? I'll say that again. That on average, of course, these are all averages, right? That a Chick-fil-A chicken store, chicken sandwiches, um, anyway, a Chick-fil-A store grosses twice as much, I believe they said, as the Starbucks and a McDonald's combined. And here's the comparison, friends. Look at the menu items on a Chick-fil-A, which I think they said there were like 12 or 13 main items on the Chick-fil-A menu. And the Starbucks and the McDonald's have two to four times as many items. The moral to my story is, friends, that you do not have to have a whole bunch of different flowers to make more and be more successful. So I'm going to leave that there. I just want to, to, I would just wanted to show an example that you can apply to your business and think about. If you happen to be a Chick-fil-A eater, every time you go through the Chick-fil-A, you're now going to think about that. 
and compare it to your business or every time you drive past, past one. And another example <clears throat> of that, I remember years ago, um, I was speaking at an Association of Specialty Cut Flower Growers um, conference. It was actually a grower's school, which is a type of, um, it was either part of a bigger conference or we actually started having just grower um, conferences because there were so many new growers. I was speaking at one of those. And uh, the person that spoke before me, um, if you are not familiar with Pamela and Frank Arnowski of Texas Specialty Cut Flowers, um, you'll find them on social media under Arnowski, and I'm going to spell it, A-R-N-O-S-K-Y Family Farms. And they moved to that name because they now not only have a farm in Texas, they have a farm in, I think it's Minnesota. Um, they bought a farm up there to grow peonies because they can't grow peonies where they are in Texas. It doesn't get cold enough. Anyway, you have to check them out. Fam Pamela and Frank, who are good friends, are the rock stars. They're the, the first um, flower farmers that really... Um, along with Lynn Bezinski, they're the ones that brought us all around. You may not know that, but that's where it all started. Anyway, Frank was speaking after me, or before me, at this growers conference. And um, I was speaking about, you know, being in the city and being small. And um, I don't even think I had a tractor back then. That was before I had my bed maker. And Frank, who, you know, is was, I mean, particular, he was the president of the ASCFG then. He was particularly well-known then. And so, I mean, there was a, probably 150 people in this room, and I was sitting in the back. And Pamela and Frank, you know, are just, were obviously very successful, have been for a long time. They worked their cans off, and he showed his, um, he was talking about his seedling production, you know, how he does that, kind of what the process is like and given the steps. And then when it came to the Q&A time, question after question after question was like, well, don't you grow like tons of ranunculus and a, tulips and anemones? And um, and I do believe that Frank, Pamela and Frank now, and I think they did then, grew those crops, but their primary crops, as I remember it, were annuals, just like I did. And people kept saying, but don't you grow? Um, people were asking about whatever the hottest recent variety of some bulb or some high value crop was. And Frank said, no, we don't grow that. I just grow more sunflowers or I plant more sunflowers. Because what he was trying to drive home is what, and he drove it home to me, y'all. This is how it helped me stay online for what I ended up doing in my career is that you don't have to move up to more luxury crops. And there's nothing wrong with those crops if you're set up to them. But I wasn't set up. I don't have hoop houses and greenhouses, right? You can stay grounded in the basics, the annuals, and still create a lot of um, income for your farm. And that's what Frank was sharing. Why? And I can remember, I can't remember the exact example, but he said, if I wanted to grow that, I would have to purchase the bulbs at X number amount, which would cost this much money, or I could buy, you know, $40 worth of sunflower seeds and produce that same amount of income. Do you see what I'm saying? As long as you have customers to buy it and you can do it and they buy it week after week, the potential is amazing. So I just wanted to help everybody realize that it can be simple it can be low investment, high return, depending on what your business model is. And all of this is, there are so many variables all, y'all. Um, and that's the other part of this. 
Yes, if you want to get the highest dollar per stem for your flowers, doing be, becoming a farmer florist is definitely the avenue to do that. But there are other ways to create good income for your hard work and not have you don't have to go down that pathway. So this was just a little short touch base at a girl, at a boy, you can grow annuals, create a successful flower farm and business. Um, and yes, I do grow one row of peonies, <clears throat> a few tuberoses, which are actually perennials where I am. We don't have to lift them. But they were like sideliner items because I happened into them um, they are not, by any stretch of the imagination, major players on my flower farm. So, friends, I just wanted to show that even some of the big, super successful businesses stick with a basic, simple plan, and you can do that, too. And I would love to hear from you. Um, you know, you can connect with me over at thegardenersworkshop.com. Um, there is on the homepage, uh, connect with Lisa and it take kind of shows you all my, um, places you can connect with me live. And I would love to answer your questions and, um, send them on in. We'd love to talk to you. All right, friends, until we meet again, signing off. Ciao. Hey friends. I received a super sweet note and a little dog treat gift for Tucker in the mail from Julia of Sicily Fish Flowers. And I wanted to read you her card because I find this to be um, the confidence part of taking a course is sometimes the most beneficial. Thank you, Lisa. I am taking your course and learning so much. I have this dog treat side hustle and I am trying my hand at flower farming. Your course is giving me the confidence to keep going. Signed, Julia. Friends, I love getting notes and messages and DMs from you guys. Um, and sometimes the, the information is super helpful, but it's the power of having the confidence and knowing that somebody has your back for you to take the next step is um, all we need. Thank you, Julia. Mm -hmm.